This video is proudly sponsored by myself. And if you want to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers, this is a journey I've been on for 10 years now, please finally consider hitting that subscribe button. And as always, we don't do inflation here. Windows 11 Pro retail keys are still just $12.50 worldwide, also 10 years strong, and it can activate in all languages. So if you're interested, click the video description to purchase them. For as long as we have had digital worlds, we always wanted to fill them with digital life as well, NBCs. So what started with simple blocky figures on the screen has now evolved into this wonderful character with faces, voices and emotions. But the goal is not just better graphics, better looking NPCs, it's also about immersion, about connecting with them, about actual believability. How much do you believe this NPC you're actually talking to? So these NPCs that we want should feel real. So characters that can react, adapt, maybe even learn. So not just simple lines of code that we always have seen, but we want to have convincing dynamic beings around us, interact with them, etc, etc. So this obsession is driving some of the most exciting advancements in both AI and visual technology regarding NPCs. So in this series, we'll take a closer look at the cutting edge world, uh, work shaping the future of digital characters. So first we're going to look at Epic Games Meta Human Framework. Then we're going to look at Nvidia's AI driven NPCs and the latest breakthroughs in neural rendering, procedural animation and behavior modeling. So what does it take to make a digital character truly come alive and what can we actually see in the future, but also the very, very near future? Let's find that out. What does it take to create a character, a face of a character that feels really real but does not exist, it's just a digital character, but still you have the believability of the character? Well, there is this amazing tool called MetaHuman created by Epic Games. And this tool has been out for quite a while now, quite a couple of years, but it is involved in such a powerful state right now that I just really have to talk about it. MetaHuman is not just regular software anymore, it's not a random character generator. It is now a gateway to create photorealistic, emotionally expressive and fully rigged digital humans. And now it can be done in minutes. So the MetaHuman creator, integrated directly into Unreal Engine 5 to 6, allows pretty much anyone, so even an enthusiast from to an indie developer to a major studio, to design lifelike characters with cinematic detail. So you, ne you need a unique body shape, you need a unique custom hairstyle, or your own clothes to clothing assets. Consider it done with just a few clicks. And the latest update introduces a very powerful parametric body system, and this is going to break away from rigid templates. So what this means now is you have more diversity, more flexibility, more realism, and all far less technical guesswork, which you normally have with uh, previous animation jobs. So one of the most groundbreaking features we have now is the mesh to MetaHuman. So if you have a custom 3D head, whether that is from a scan or a sculpt or a creature concept or whatever, you can now import it and watch as MetaHuman automatically turns into a rigged, ready to animate character. So this means eyes will align joints will calibrate blend shapes fall right into place. Normally this was a process that used to take weeks or days and now it can happen in the cloud in just minutes. So it's not just for humans anymore because with new tools for DNA calibration and MetaPipe, MetaHuman is stepping to the realm of also digital creatures and monsters, enabling animators to bring fantasy races, monsters, non-humans, all those characters to life with the same level of nuance, realism and control. So um, a beautiful face doesn't necessarily mean anything if it doesn't have the expression you need. And we have seen that expression in games like, for example, The Last of Us 1 and 2, where uh, they actually use the actors to, to truly play out the scene and face capture all of that. And I would say it's it's a perfect example in um, yeah of how this how the game an example shows us more expression than the actual TV series because Ashley Johnson who plays Ellie just did a f way more better job than uh, Bella Ramsey in my opinion from uh, yeah from the TV series and normally all this had to be done with expensive uh, capture rigs but 
This time it's going to be different because with just a webcam or a smartphone, performance can drive facial animations all in real time. So capturing every blink, laugh, smirk, uh, all of that. And you know, the new update even animates head movement and emotionally tone directly from audio input as well. So only if you have lines speak, uh, spoken, you can use that as well. But no expensive motion capture rigs are needed anymore. Just a webcam or an, an iPhone or something to capture it and in real time. Also, no endless keyframing is needed anymore. If you have, have ever animated something, you know what I'm talking about. It is just the natural performance of an actor and it can be done real time now without having yeah, expensive equipment. Doesn't take months anymore. Just you or an actor with a good camera and you are pretty much good to go. What is also new, it is not just for Unreal anymore. So this is quite a bold move, but Epic has unlocked MetaHuman's reach. Now the digital actors can uh, actually step beyond Unreal Engine into an example, its biggest competitor, Unity but also in other animation tools like Godot, Blender, Maya, and way more. And with the launch of Fab, which is now the new digital uh, marketplace, creators can buy, sell, and share MetaHumans and compatible assets with ease. So Epic isn't just building a tool for Epic Games only, they're building an ecosystem with MetaHuman, which can be used worldwide with all very popular animations, but not just for video games, also film, virtual production, commercials, and beyond. So I would say um, MetaHuman is definitely a big step in the future of animators and hopefully creating just very um, realistic, believable characters with ease because pretty much any studio, even indie studios, they don't need to rent expensive equipment. They don't need to like adjust key points, adjust joints, eyes, that kind of stuff and models. MetaHuman can help them doing all of that. And I would say that definitely saves a lot of time of course money and hopefully they are able to put into the rest of creating a beautiful game. Now we have seen what it takes to build a realistic face, but what happens when that face starts to actually think for itself and actually speak back by itself? So while Epic Games is now focusing on perfecting how NPCs look, how animations look, Nvidia is trying to teach them how to think and talk back for themselves. No pre-written dialogue. This is actually true intelligence and it is called ACE and ACE stands for Avatar Cloud Engine. And it might be just the brain behind the next generation of intelligent digital characters we are going to see. So imagine walking through a digital world where every character has a mind of their own, where conversations aren't pre-written and where behavior isn't scripted. It is what you say that actually matters and that is going to be the promise of Nvidia ACE. In games like Inzoi, uh, Ace powers NPCs who don't just stand around, they observe, adapt and react. So each character is driven by an AI uh, language model, designed not, ju not just to respond, but to actually understand what you're doing. So there's an AI behind it and it has 500 million parameters. Not huge, but enough to give life to complex behaviors and voice driven responses in real time. So there's a catch though, even this small model needs one gigabyte of VRAM to function. So what happens when games want deeper AI, bigger models, smarter characters? Well, we're looking at a future where GPUs won't just render stunning visuals, they also now going to need to power other stuff like personalities. So here's where we're also going to see the AI cores uh, truly yeah, um, being maybe added upon the GPU, not just as video RAM, but for specific AI RAM. And we of course see this now also with Intel CPUs doing that. So this could pretty much change how not only games are built, but also how gamers upgrade their hardware. So of course, intelligence is only half the story. The other half is the voice. With that, we come to Nvidia Riva. And Nvidia Riva is a high-speed voice AI system that can listen, understand, and talk back almost instantly. So with powerful speech-to-text and text-to-speech tools, Riva now transforms written words into natural, unique voices. And it is fast, it is multilingual, and it can craft a custom voice for your uh, game in hours. So not weeks like we normally have, uh, do see with um, yeah, voice lines, recording audio, sometimes even longer than weeks. But there's also a difference between sounding human, um, like we, can, we see from tools like Eleven Labs, which pretty much does a good job in um, yeah, doing AI voices, but actually feeling human. 
So in early Ace demos like Zoopunk and Deadmeat, something was off. The voices were clear, the words made sense, but the emotion, the timing, the soul, that was still missing. But we've entered a new kind of uncanny valley, not visual, but vocal. So AI voices that are technically human-like, but emotionally flat and narratively hollow. So what is the problem? AI can hold a conversation, sure, but it can't really tell a story with believability and emotion. For example, games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order or Tales of Kantera drive on handwritten dialogue. And this is so crafted by writers, bought for life by actors, an example for, by The Last of Us, timed for emotional impact. And replace that with AI and something gets lost. That is the shared experience, the narrative precision, and the moments we all remember, and also the um, emotion being brought by the actor. And if every player gets a different version of that same conversation, do we lose the communal storyline altogether? So now developers face a choice. Do you prioritize freedom and improvisation with AI that says something new every line? Or do you lock in narrative control with dialogue that hits hard every time and is being brought with all the emotions from an actual actor? Well, the answer might be somewhere in the middle. Why not let AI handle the background banter, the town gossip, the wandering merchant, but when the story really matters, bring in the writers and bring in the voice actors. Yes, yeah, so, you know, the soul pretty much of, I would say we've seen with a lot of games like The Last of Us, those voice actors did an amazing, amazing job. However, Nvidia Ace definitely opens the door of a future of interactive, unscripted dialogue. But behind that door lies a question, should every character be alive or should it some still be written? The technology is ready, the tools are here. The challenge now is how do we get it in a way that actual actors can deliver it? Um, or is this something that we will never be able to replace? That's pretty much a, pretty much a question um, Yeah, we need to face in the next couple of years, I would say. Now that we have seen MetaHuman and NVIDIA's Ace, we have seen what it takes to make NPCs look real and even speak like real people. But what if they could evolve to more real persons? What if they could adapt to it? What if they could feel like it? So welcome to the future. This is a new wave of technologies which is pushing NPCs beyond anything we have seen before. This is not just about faces or voices or that kind of basic stuff. This is about NPCs that can actually learn, actually move, and actually think for themselves in the digital worlds. So let's start with section one, I would say. This is going to be neural rendering, and with this we can actually reinvent photorealism. So neural rendering is a tech that uh, blends deep learning with computer graphics to create digital humans that are almost indistinguishable from reality. At the heart of this is neural radiance fields. This is in short nerves. So they just don't render geometry. They simulate how light flows through a 3D scene, giving us hyper detailed fo photorealistic characters from any angle. This is not just any ray tracing. This is a completely new different technique. And it doesn't stop just there because 40 human video models now let you animate full body performances with perfect motion consistency even when the camera moves or pose shifts. With tools like Prism Avatar, you can actually run these kind of very highly advanced avatars on something as your phone. So yes, you can have these real-time high fidelity characters right from your pocket. And also a very, something very important in example is if you need your digital character to grow or change over time, well, the new maintainable avatar models can learn new looks without forgetting who they were before. So we're talking about digital twins that evolve across entire games or even franchises. So changing as your story does as well. So in section two of this chapter, let's look at procedural animations. And this means this is going to be movement, but with an actual meaning. So your character looks amazing, but do they move like an actual human being? Here is where procedural animation comes in. So instead of relying on fixed pre-recorded movements, Procedural systems create animations on the fly. That means characters react to the world around them in real time. So their feet stick to uneven ground using inverse kinematics. An example, they can stumble over obstacles. They flinch at nearby explosions. They exist within the space. They just not walk programmed like that through the space. 
And here is the fun part, because developers can dial in unique styles for each NPC. Slow, heavy strides for a bruiser, light twitchy steps for someone who is nervous, and even subtle quirks like limp or a hunch can now be procedurally generated. So it is not just regular program movement, this is actually giving it personality in motion. And section three, let's look at behavioral AI. So giving NPCs a mind of their own. Now let's talk about the real game changer here. And this is intelligent behavior. So in the future now, gone will be the days of rigid behavior threes and basic scripted loops. Today, NPCs can learn, plan and respond just like real people. They use machine learning to adapt to your playstyle, but also they use reinforced learning to improve over time. And with natural language processing, they can understand and reply to anything you say. So some use GOAP, that's G-O-A-P, that's goal oriented action planning. And this allows NPCs to evaluate the situation and build complex action plans on the fly. So this means no script required. And yes, some even track emotions and social bonds. So that loyal companion who starts off cold and distant, they might warm up if you treat them right. The angry merchant, well, raise your sword too often in town and the next time the prices might go up. And these are just to fully understand the difference between current games. These are not pre-written scripts or pre-written characters. They are actually living systems capable of evolving relationships, decision, and entire storylines. This means that every game will, or at least will develop differently according to the player. So that means you will not have the same story twice, even if you have so many um, different programmable actions, you know, sometimes people find them uh, find them all out and you see that, yeah, there's a lot of uh, similarities in, in, in playthroughs from specific games, but this can actually make every game feel unique for the player. We are witnessing the rise of new digital species and the rise of a brand new future. And it's already here because Epic's MetaHuman giving our NPCs faces, Nvidia's Ace giving them actually voices and minds, and behind the scenes, experimental technologies are giving them memory, emotion, and behavior. So from neuro, neuro rendering to procedural motion to adaptive AI, NPCs are becoming no longer just stupid background characters. They're actually becoming systems within our virtual worlds. But this progress comes with questions because this is going to sound a little bit like the matrix, everything we've covered so far. I think questions also a little bit regarding limits are, can AI truly replicate emotional depth? In example, I use The Last of Us as great examples, how the characters really put in their heart to uh, act out as that specific character. Also, can it preserve the art of storytelling with that? So the emotional depth, the storytelling, is AI actually able to do this in full force like we've seen now? And as if characters become more autonomous, how do we as players stay in actual control and you know, maybe apply limits of what we do want to see and not? So there's still work to be done. And I would say we haven't yet crossed the Uncanny, Uncanny Valley, not yet completely. Uh, but we are getting very close. I mean, an example, Ch uh, ChatGPT is now being used by a lot of people, especially young people for therapy, you know, um, because they just trust ChatGPT more than a therapist. And it is just getting smarter and smarter, you know? And yeah, that's something I would see, I would say we're going to see that for NPCs as well, because the technology is already here. So I would say soon the NPCs we all ignored may be the ones we're going to remember most. What do you think about futures, uh, the future of NPCs, about AI, about behavior? Should we just stick, stick with the original concept like we've always seen with video games? Or do you actually embrace these kind of new, well, future techs? Let me know that in the comments and hope to see one of my next videos.